Hey guys, Vikram Prolkar from UiPath here, and today we're going to talk about UiPath's UI automation capabilities. To begin, I want to do a quick recap of what is an application. An application has two components. The first is the user interface. A user has the ability to interact with things like text boxes, buttons, labels, and other UI elements visible to them. And applications also have a backend. This is where various construction logic or business logic resides or rules on where a button navigates to or how data is actually stored in the application. Now, when developers are building both of these components, they use something called selectors. For web applications, that's things like HTML code. For desktop applications, that's something called Win32 tags. But UiPath's bread and butter is the ability to interact with the user interface and reliably interact with all of those UI elements. And so let's take a deep dive into the multiple ways that UiPath will actually interact with any type of application. The first method is what we call multi-anchor unified targeting. This is our default way of interacting with an application, and we actually use four concurrent methods in order to actually reliably interact with a UI element. You of course have the selector that I mentioned before. You have a fuzzy version of it, which eliminates things, dynamic things like IDs. You have the text, and you have image as a fallback. Now, if UiPath isn't actually installed on the same device as an application, you might need to use things like Citrix automation or native RDP automation. The way this works is the robot would sit on the actual client machine, but there's a virtual channel client that would interact with a remote runtime that's installed on the remote application server. And the third option, if neither multi-anchor unified targeting and neither Citrix or native RDP automation is available is what we call AI computer vision. AI computer vision leverages machine learning models to basically allow the robot to interact with the screen exactly like how a human does. Let's do a technical deep dive into our multi-anchor unified targeting method. You'll notice I have UiPath Studio installed on the same machine as my application that I want to automate. We have a series of UI automation activities, and these activities are separated into two categories. The first is what we call our parent container activities, where I would define a specific application or browser that I'm interacting with. And once I've defined that, I can then combine it with a child action, such as a click, type into activity, and many more, and interact with a specific UI element. If I scroll down, I've already indicated a parent application here called All Scripts PM. And if I want to interact with a specific UI element, all I need to do is indicate that specific target on screen. You'll notice that when I enter what we call our selection screen mode, I'm able to hover over specific elements and indicate them. I'm going to go ahead and indicate this appointment scheduling navigation tab. As you can see, we're going to return four different aspects of that specific UI element. The selector, a fuzzy selector, the text, and an image. If for any reason I feel that this specific selector isn't reliable enough, I can add an anchor to it. This is kind of allowing the robot to interact with that UI element the same way humans do. If the appointment scheduling label were to move around on the screen, humans would still be able to identify it because it's under the scheduling section. And so similarly, we can define anchor points for our robots. And these anchor elements will have the same four selector, fuzzy selector, text, and image elements to ensure reliable interaction with. Another cool thing is that if, for example, we have things like indexes or names that are dynamically changing from one page to the next, I can replace these names with variables, regular expressions, and fuzzy matching. And so this allows me to ensure that as a developer, 
I'm defining the exact selector that I want to interact with. Now, if I want to dive into the specific details, I have something called UI Explorer. UI Explorer gives me a full view of the visual tree of an application, the various properties behind a specific UI element, and allows me to select the specific items of a selector that I want to include whenever a robot tries to interact with a specific UI element. Now, our AI driver algorithm automatically selects what it thinks is the minimum required in order to reliably interact with a specific element, but developers can go into the details and change them as required. So what happens in scenarios where I'm not able to install UiPath on my remote desktop or my Citrix server for any reason? In those scenarios, we're able to still leverage our UiPath Studio on an external machine and interact with the application reliably. In order to do this, we have to establish a virtual channel between our machine and the application machine. And in order to do this, on the application machine, you have to install the UiPath Remote Runtime. Once this is installed, when you want to just indicate a specific element on a remote desktop, you will have the ability to do that. And it'll look exactly like it does as if it, the UiPath Studio was installed natively. So next up, I want to introduce AI computer vision. And so if I enter my selection screen mode again, you'll notice if I hover over, let's say a specific tab, this application doesn't expose them to our UiPath driver. However, that doesn't mean that we still can't reliably interact with them. This is where we have a series of computer vision activities. Let me go ahead and bring them up on the screen. You'll see them here. These activities are split again into two. We have a parent scope where I'm actually able to indicate a specific screen. And you can see I'm going to indicate the whole application or I could indicate this subset here. Once I do that, it's going to pass the image of a screen through our UiPath screen OCR engine. And once it's done that, I am able to drag a simple UI element activity, such as a click activity, and indicate on scope. You'll notice I have an image of the specific application. And if I hold the S key, all of the actual elements that are identified by our AI computer vision model are going to be exposed to me. And you'll notice all these tabs now have their individual elements that I can indicate and also add anchors to. Thanks for joining me in this quick tutorial of how UiPath interacts with any type of application in three different ways. Till next time, bye.